One of the discussions that Jeff Thurley and I have had off and on for many, many years is uh, focused on the poem, The Dash. And it's all about your leadership legacy. And as I remind my students all the time, that dash represents what you do with your life on the gravestone that comes between the date of your birth and the date of your death. And that dash being your leadership legacy can't be something that you think about as you draw your last breath. It has to be something that you commit to, that you live every single day. And I hope people will remember that I, I really did care, that I really did want to make a difference. I wanted to make a difference for my colleagues, and I wanted to make a difference for every student who walked through my classroom door. into education. It was purely by accident. I'd had some background in training and development when I was working in corporate America. And when Jim and I moved to Delaware, I had two toddlers, because Jennifer and Matthew are less than a year apart. And I love my children, but I also recognize to be a better wife, mother, sister, daughter and friend, I needed a little bit of intellectual stimulation outside the home. And this was a prime example of understanding that life is really a banquet to be sampled. And thank goodness I sampled education because after one semester, I really knew that I was hooked. I knew that I had come home. One of the things that I think is interesting that I always remind my students, and sometimes I forget to take my own advice, and that is uh, a message that comes from Marcus Buckingham, who suggests that oftentimes the way we find our passion as adults is to reflect on what we really enjoy doing as children. And I always had a little bit of that teacher in me when I was a child growing up. And at one point, I was even a member of the Future Teachers of America. I don't know if that organization even exists any longer. But I moved away from that. I still knew I wanted to do something to change the world. So that's a long way of saying that I came to education purely by accident and was so grateful that I did. For a long time, I just thought she was a teacher. You know, when you're a kid, you don't really know the difference between like teacher and professor and like what that means. So I knew that she was like a fancy teacher because she had a doctorate, but I also didn't like really know what that meant until I got older. When I finally started to like really think about my career and what I wanted to do, I didn't know exactly what it would look like in psychology, but I knew I wanted to do what my mom had done. So we grew up, my brother and I, going down to um, Nova with my mom on the weekends. She would take classes. And we would pack up the car every weekend and we would go down for her to take classes. Um, I remember it because my dad got us these like really, really small little TVs and we would, we thought back in the day they were like the coolest things and you would carry them like a lunchbox. And I remember we would bring these little TVs down to Nova and she would take classes. And then when I kind of got this idea that like a doctorate is this really incredible thing that people could do. I felt like what better way to honor my mom and like her legacy than to do that myself, you know? Like my mom is uh, the first generation in her family to go to college and then to further her career, you know, to the level of a doctorate, I felt like that's something I can carry forward and it can be like something that we carry forward for the females in our family. And then my cousin, 
I think felt similarly. She's very close to my mom and so Kelly decided she was getting her doctorate and it's kind of like been a, a thing that the three of us like have this bond that we all chose to like go to the highest level possible in our careers. And one of her great talents is is spotting gifts in other people and then not leaving them alone. I mean, she, you know, and 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 really kind of giving people opportunities. I think there are lots of folks out there who see opportunity and then they seize it for themselves. And one of the things that differentiates Pat is that she sees opportunity and then she shuffles it off, she hands it off to other people, which is really, I mean, if you think about it, it's incredible because that's not the typical way that people get ahead, right? Um, the typical way that people get ahead is they see opportunity and they grab it for themselves and they make sure everyone knows that that was opportunity that they saw and they, that they performed. And, uh, and, and Pat's, is, is, Pat's way is much different. It's um, how can I, it's in some ways, it's how can I promote the people around me um, is sort of her, me her mentality. Um, and in that way, like you said, her impact on the college is immeasurable, partially because she's not out there making sure everyone is measuring her impact, you know? Um, and partly because she has worked tirelessly behind the scenes to encourage so many other people to step up um, and to, to get involved and to make a difference. And so she has made a difference by encouraging other people to make a difference. Well, I first met Pat um, on the telephone. Pat and I found a time where I could call her and ask her some questions about Goldie Beacom. And there really was no better spokesperson for Goldie Beacom than Pat Bueller. She told me why she came here to teach, um, all about the closeness of the faculty and staff, the, the nature of the small campus, and how successful they were, how multicultural you know, the student body was, and answered every question I had, and then some. And even the, the hard questions about, you know, so why would this current, my predecessor, why would he be leaving? And she said, well, I think, you know, that was part of what he had planned when they asked him to be president, that he would serve for a certain amount of time. And she just seemed to be in the know, but also, had a really thoughtful response to everything. So you could tell she had spent a lot of time really immersing herself in who Goldie Beacom is and was, and, and I really think is probably our best spokesperson we could ever have. When you think about, you know, if we were to have a Miss Goldie Beacom College pageant, you know, Pat would probably be the winner <laughs> because she is Goldie Beacom College. And it was a result of all of that that was why I decided to apply to be the president here at Goldie Beacom. There's just something about having this person who's so important and is your mom, and then like you share this professional world. You know that there. How do you explain that to people? That what a unique opportunity to get to share my mom in a different setting and to kind of like learn each other as professionals and as teachers and to swap ideas and then just to you know get to share students and say like yeah that's my mom like pat bueller have you had her in class like my mom and she'll do the same thing like oh yeah jen's my daughter actually my my first class ever at goldie beacon was an 8 30 class with dr Bula's daughter jen and my journey continued until now my last class at goldie beacon college is with Dr. Bula herself. And over this time, I've had like four, I believe four or five classes with Dr. Bula and her impact on me, both in the classroom and out has been tremendous. As I, as I started taking her classes, I kind of transitioned my mind is, my grades are important, but it's what I take out of that. What I remember, what I can use uh, is, that, is what's actually important, what's actually going to benefit me out of school. And I believe that with Dr. Buda, she really gave me that foundation. I think there's a common thread that runs through most of the things that I decide to do. And it is all about helping people find their passion, helping people develop, and helping people make 
connections with other people that can further help them develop. And one of the things that I always thought was so important is that I not just tell people what to do, but instead I show them by way of example what to do. So I'm a firm believer that every one of us has to be a lifelong learner. And the beauty of being a professor, and particularly at Goldie Beacom College, is we are afforded that opportunity with our teaching schedule to engage in professional development. We are actually required as part of our job responsibilities to focus on our own professional development. And what better way to communicate to our students that they have to be lifelong learners by showing that we too are lifelong learners. So as I've been able to identify how I want to develop and the things that I should pursue outside of the classroom, everything has always been connected by how it can come back and enrich the classroom experience for the students. For instance, my work in SHRM, which I loved for years. I loved my role as state council director. Prior to that, for almost eight years, I served as the college relations director on the state council for the state of Delaware. I've had national roles and I continue in those national roles now as an item writer for our certification exams. I'm in the process now of working on a project redesigning the curriculum that will be used in colleges, universities across the country for HR programs. But all of this really comes back to help me continue to develop and learn and then enrich the classroom experience so that I'm not just teaching from a, a textbook what was written 10 years ago or even five years ago, but I'm actually able to share with the students what the challenges are today in these fields. There's a former MBA student who I'm still in touch with, uh, David Burke, who caught me off guard one time when he was speaking at an event. It was a Sherm State Conference, and I was sitting in the audience, and he referred to me during his presentation, and he called me the grandmother. And of course, that's before I was actually a grandmother, and I thought, whoa, where is this going? And he talked about that need to take what you've learned, turn around, and teach that to others. So he referred to me as the grandmother who had taught him, and then he turned around and taught others. She approached me and said, hey, you know, I have this idea for an HR book, and, and I really want it to be a, a book that's super useful for HR professionals. And, and so I have all this HR knowledge, and and I'm thinking, okay, where, you know, how am I going to help you write an HR book? And she's like, she's like, you have the communication knowledge. You teach these communication courses. I think we could really kind of tie these together well. And uh, and so it was exciting to me to think of the idea of, of writing a book, but I was still sort of unsure of like where I would, how I would contribute, because I was like, you have all the HR knowledge, and so where, where what role will I play? And so um, it really that was. Like I said, one of the highlights of my career was working on um, working on that book with her. It was, you know, it was so fun to see um, just her wealth of knowledge, and then to partner with somebody who was so um, accommodating and kind and um, easygoing, and we just made a really good pair. So I keep everything. Uh, one of the things I've done through the years has uh, gone to a lot of antique stores and found Goldie memorabilia. And when Colleen came to the college, I actually gave her two of my old books. But this is um, a book from Goldie College. But I collect these things. I have um, several like this that I will give to 
the library so they can keep it in their archives. But I also was able to find in some of those antique places, there's one hanging up over here. I'm not sure you can see it. It is one of the college graduation classes. I love having all of the history of the college. I also over here have Klein's uh, history of Goldie Beacom College and Neville is updating that book, but I have Klein's original on that. Uh, for the most part, um, most of these I've read in their entirety or a part of each of these. Some of them are textbooks and uh, some are just great reading books. And then of course, um, Joel would be happy and so would Fatma. I do keep copies of my own books here. So the recent book with Fatma that uh, we wrote on the gender pay gap is here and one of the books that I'm particularly proud of, again, I'm co-author, The Heavy Lifting was really done by one of our former MBA students, Jason Scott, the former CEO of Presswick Publishing, co-author, The Employee Satisfaction Revolution. And I can't say how happy I was to work with Joel Warden on up, down, and sideways. And of course, I'm surrounded by um, a lot of things uh, just from my family. Uh, we picked this up someplace that says our family is just one tent away from being a full-blown circus, uh, which also helps to remind us that we can't take ourselves too seriously and the Bueller clan is known for having fun. Jim and I have been very fortunate because while we're very different people, we have the same basic values in life. And we always believed we were blessed with two children and they were our number one priority. So we were able to support each other because we had that common focus of what is best for the kids. Being a grandparent is a huge reward in life. It, it's rewarding in the sense that you get to see another generation uh, it's a continuation uh, of your own life, but it's particularly rewarding when you hear your own child saying things that you said and he swore he'd never say. <laughs> oh, I, well, I'm easy. I met her at uh, my second class in grad school in Pace University, White Plains, in this new course, Management and the Environment, which was real new back then. And she was coming from, you were coming from White Plains, that was the only time you were going to Pleasantville. Mm -hmm. And I was coming from Orange County, New York, and I, I recognized real early that Pat was the hardest worker and probably the smartest person you wanted to meet. And, and really, you saw that in her career and all. She never settled for anything, and she always, had 6,000 ideas on different jobs, things to do, ways to improve uh, our lot in life. And the kids will tell a story about when I was traveling uh, for my organizations, Pat and the kids would come along and Pat would map out the whole agenda because she assumed we'd never get back there again. And we found some of those notes just yesterday of some of the cities we visited and how you know, Pat made it a point, no matter what she was doing, to always be ultra prepared, try to get the best uh, outcome for everybody involved. And it's just been great to watch, you know, what she's doing with the books and the writing and some of the many things we found when we were going through the basement here just recently that we, you forget that you do in life. Of all of the 
accolades and awards, I think one of the proudest moments for me was when Jennifer was presented the Excellence in Teaching Award. For a long time, I've been very nervous about letting go because as you can see from uh, over th three decades of stuff, we'll say, here, I do have a difficult time letting go. And I wondered how I was going to feel as I began to dismantle this room where I'd spent so much time and so much of who I am is here. And I've found the solution to that in so many of my colleagues at the college because I wondered who was going to take all of these books. Mary, he just published a couple of days ago. <laughs> whatever. Hey. Mary, a binder? Yeah, a binder. It's, it's a mixed bag thinking about retiring. Goldie Beacom College is a large part of who I am. And even in the professional community, if you ask my SHRM colleagues, uh, various colleagues of different organizations that I've worked with, they always say it's my name and Goldie Beacom College linked together because I've been so proud of my affiliation with the college and so grateful that I've been able to be a part of this community for so many years. Someone had said to me not that long ago that my time here had spanned five decades. And while, no, I haven't been here 50 years, spanning five decades makes me recognize that I've been here to see so many wonderful changes. And I think one of the most rewarding things about being with any organization for such a long period of time is to have witnessed a wonderful, positive evolution of that organization. And I can definitely say, in so many ways, Goldie Beacom College is different than it was in 1989 and different in so many positive ways when we look at the MBA program that didn't exist in 1989, when we look at our DBA program, when we look at the buildings that we have now that we didn't have in 1989, we see all these positive changes. But there are also wonderful elements of Goldie that remain so deeply embedded, such as the culture of community and caring. I still remember when my daughter had meningitis and was in intensive care, and the colleagues from the college community that came forward to help in so many different ways as we navigated our family challenge. And that is still the community that we see today. Goldie Beacom College embraces everyone who comes here. And I'm not just talking about our faculty, our staff, and administration. I'm also talking about embracing our students. We step up as a community and we help our students when they're in need as well. So I think that there are wonderful things that we've retained and I think that there are great things that we've changed. It's truly the best of all worlds. I can say I will miss Goldie Beacom College but I know that I'll still be a part somehow of this institution. You can't stay in one particular place for so many years and love what you do each and every day and not take a piece of that with you when you leave. One that uh, was hung in this room when we moved in and I continue to look at 
is um, this that says every job is a self-portrait of the person who did it. Uh, and I try as best I can uh, to live that every day. Then, as we launch our graduates out into the world today, we're also saying goodbye to a long-term and beloved faculty member. Dr. Pat Bueller is retiring from full-time teaching after more than 30 years today, and this marks her last commencement ceremony. She will still be a part of Goldie Beacom, however, upon the recommendation of the faculty of the college, the executive leadership team, has voted to honor Dr. Bueller with the title Professor Emeritus upon her retirement, an honor that carries with it the opportunity for her to still be involved in various ways here at the college. Thank you, Dr. Bueller, who I'm sure is watching at home, for your many years of friendship and service to the mission and people of Goldie Beacom College. Professor Emeritus is, um, is, a, is a title that's given to professors who have, um, who have had extraordinary contribution at a college. And so even though they're sort of retiring, um, it's, an, it's a position of honor that recognizes that, that this individual has given um, just a substantial uh, amount of time, resources, and energy, and passion to an institution, and so Pat's sort of the perfect candidate um, for Professor Emeritus, and uh, and I think that 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 the that the benefit of 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 sort of giving that to a person like Pat is is that then we have the her her as a resource. You know, she'll continue to 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 give her her wisdom, her insight. I do feel like I've accomplished some of what I wanted to do. I've been incredibly fortunate in meeting wonderful students and wonderful colleagues, uh, both through the Goldie family as well as the Delaware professional community. I don't actually feel like my work is totally finished yet. I still feel like there's some help left in me. Maybe it's with grandchildren, children, maybe it's with people I haven't even met yet. I'm not sure that I'll ever feel like my job is completely done and I've done everything I need to do until I take that last breath. I feel like, you know, legacy has like this weight to it. Um, but for mom, I think her legacy is, is a lived legacy. It's all these generations of people that she has touched. You know, it's all these students that have met her in the classroom and she's gone above and beyond for them. I think her legacy will be a caring legacy. You know, um, more than anything else, um, the belief that she gave us is what will last. Because now she's out of the classroom, you know but I'll always remember her words. I'll always remember her guidance, her mentorship. I know it is a cliche, um, changing the world one step at a time, but that's exactly what Dr. Buddha has done. She's changing the world by changing us individually, one person, one student, one teacher at a time. I don't know how far she'll be able to get from Goldie, um, just because she's, She's such a part of this place, and I know that Goldie holds a, just a really special place in her heart too. And so, I think she'll continue to um, to contribute to to the the vision and the direction. Um, you know, I certainly hope that she'll continue to be available for folks like me to get advice from. And so, in that way, her. Um, you know, her influence and her legacy will continue here because she'll continue to sort of speak wisdom to folks like me and, and others who, uh, who, who stay in contact with her. And, and there's, no, uh, there's no metric uh, for Pat, but um, yeah, other than to say that, it's, that it's, it's, it's everywhere, you know, her fingerprints are everywhere. 
I just want her to know at the end of the day, there's like no amount of words. There's nothing that we could do that could really capture like what she means to everybody. Like that's just completely beyond measure. I really, I wish there was a way for her to know. Like for so many people, you have been just the number one like guiding light for them and, and their number one supporter. And, and that has just been invaluable. Like you've changed so many people's lives. And we think about the people that you and I both know, think about how many people, you know, just haven't been able to say like, oh yeah, Papular had this class and she did X, Y, or Z in the class and that's why I picked this career or that's why I thought I could do, you know, this job. Like there's just so many people that, I don't know if she can really like appropriately capture like the impact that she's had. And that's what I would want for her is to, you know, like really tangibly feel like, holy Moses, all these years and all these students, you know? Like how do you, how do, you do that for someone I don't know? Allison gave me this years ago, either for a birthday or Christmas, but I keep everything people gave me. Who is this? Oh, you know what? This is Nancy that I was telling you about. The college is always so good at commencement. They send us photos that they take. And I want Paula and her committee to know how much I appreciated those. They would put them in frames and I kept every single one that she ever sent. Year after year after year. This is my 1980 nine ID from the college. I, I can't part with the stuff. I will now, but I couldn't before. That's a lot of why I've done what I did. I, I enjoy having that connection with so many of the students and it has enriched my life while so many of the messages are thanking me. I always feel like I have to thank the students for all that they've given me. I have created some wonderful friendships from former students. The day some of those students walked through my classroom door, I never would have imagined the wonderful friendship and relationship that I would be able to cultivate with them years and years after graduation. I received a, a beautiful message from a former student, Camille Pilgrim Haynes, who I've been in touch with for years. And while she, like so many of the other students, tend to think in terms of a one-way relationship. I would be remiss if I didn't remind these students, literally thousands of them, how much they've enriched my life. You, you do things and you continue to do them because you are getting something out of it. And I've gotten so much out of my time and my career at Goldie Beacom College more than I could ever give back. I didn't want to cry. <laughs> well, that's the last question. <laughs>